Hey guys, it's Caitlin. Sorry I'm filming on my phone. Uh, my stupid camera and battery keeps dying on me, so I've had to re... <laughs> I'm having to re-record this like a bazillion times. And it's a little frustrating. So, it's just gonna keep slowly moving. So my name is Caitlin. <laughs> um, this is going to be ridiculous, but my name is Caitlin. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Um, so I am a little over seven months out of vertical sleeve gastrectomy. I had surgery on October 12th, 2015 in Lowell Mass at Lowell General Hospital with Dr. Rebecca Shore. Um, my starting weight, which was July of last year, um, was 335. My weight on the date of surgery was 300.8. Last time that I saw y'all, I was at 209 slash 213, but don't tell anyone. Um, and this week, two weeks later, it's been a hot minute since I've seen you guys. I haven't had time to film and then I've just had my mind hasn't been right. This week, I just weighed in with my nutritionist uh, this morning at 217. So let's talk about my weight, okay? Um, when, I, when I filmed the video, that was prior to Mother's Day, right? Um, Mother's Day, I did kind of indulge myself. I did say, you know, it's a mother's, it's Mother's Day. I'm a mother. I push two children out of my vagina. I'm gonna have a gosh darn margarita, and I'm gonna like it, and I'm gonna love it. And so I did it. And then I also had a, some Doritos, which I have not had since surgery, which wasn't a great idea. Um, and I also had a slice of like chocolate pie, which again, not the smartest idea, but I was living life as irresponsibly as possible. So um, from that point, I said, after that day, I need to be as strict as possible because I knew I was weighing in today with my uh, nutritionist and I was seeing my physician's assistant for um, my surgeon and I wanted to be as low as possible, obviously. I think the last time I saw them two months ago I was at 239. Oh, that's so depressing. That's only like 11 pounds in two months, whatever. Um, so for the past two weeks, I've literally had a protein shake for breakfast, a protein shake for lunch, and then three to four ounces of protein at night. No snacking, no nothing. Sometimes I would switch out a protein bar for a shake, but literally that's all that I was eating. Um, I was also I started going back to the gym three days a week, and then I was walking on my lunch break because it's been nicer. Um, at least a, mi a mile and a quarter, like 1.25 miles, and that or I was walking from 1.25 to one and a half miles a day, three days a week on my lunch break, in addition to working out. So I was really trying to get the weight down once it actually jumped up because within those two weeks, in the beginning of the two week period, it was up to 223, 224. You bet your ass I was kind of freaking out. I was definitely freaking out and I was frustrated and I was like hard on myself for having, uh, you know, it wasn't just the Mother's Day thing. Like definitely, like I went above and beyond what I should have, but like I had been snacking on popcorn recently um, and you know, just not great not great um habits was I taking on so um I was really having a hard time obviously with that and then again trying so hard to lose enough weight or as much weight as I possibly could in two weeks and literally not seeing the scale move at all like it went down a good chunk and then literally every single day last week I gained a pound and I was like <laughs> I was just a hot mess, you know what I mean? I was just really discouraged. I tried really hard not to get the number on the scale get to me, but it was just difficult when it wasn't going, it was just going up when I was trying to do so well. So I saw my nutritionist this morning, first thing. Um, she asked me how I felt about my weight. I told her I wasn't happy. She said that I was right on target though. I'm right on track. She said I'm doing like perfectly for where I need to be, so I shouldn't be concerned which was good to hear, you know what I mean? It's nice to hear that I'm not like a total failure. Um, but I told her I still felt like I should be farther along. Like I still feel like, because within the past few months, I feel like I'm losing five or six pounds all in one week and then three or four or five weeks go by before I lose another pound. I'm gaining weight or I'm staying the same or just nothing's happening. And it's just become really frustrating to me. Um, so I told her, I told her I could still see like changes in my body physically and I, I my 
clothes fit a little bit differently um, you know week by week but it's just the numbers on the scale that really start to irk me when I see them moving in the wrong direction so um, she definitely understood where I was coming from she I don't know if you guys aren't gonna be able to see this on this camera are you Ooh, I don't know. Um, we did a body composition analysis so I'll go over these in a second um, but we did that because she said you know you should at least see how what your body's looking like so that we can know what's happening besides the number on the scale because that's not going to tell you everything um, I did tell her that I felt like when I told her what I was eating recently just protein 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 she was like why are you being you know why are you being so strict like and I explained to her that with the scale going up I just really wanted to get things under control I felt like I was being a little bit more lax in my diet allowing alcoholic beverages to come back um, having popcorn eating things that I really shouldn't be I mean don't get me wrong I'm not eating like bread I'm not eating like obviously fast food I'm not eating chips I'm not going like the to the extremes that I used to but for me right now when I'm trying to keep it low carb a cracker with my cheese is making me feel really guilty um, you know and even just again the margarita the sugar and the calories and the carbs that are in that and then you know I was like I said in a previous video I was having them here at home whenever I felt like I needed one um, so I just explained everything to her I felt like I was really open with them this time around I feel like a lot of times I go into the appointments with the worry that they're gonna think I'm a failure that they're gonna think I'm a horrible person um, but this time I was just like I'm done I'm kind of frustrated and I need some like professional help besides like mental help I need some actual advice so when I told her that I felt like I was getting a little bit lax with my diet and everything she just said you know this isn't a, it's not a diet you don't don't be in the mentality of it being a diet don't be in the mentality of it being something that you have to be so strict you this is your life right this is your life choice and this is now your life going forward um, you have to live life, but you need to live it, you know, wisely. You need to live it in moderation when it comes to food. Um, you know, you're right. You can't go back to all the crap, but you can't be so strict on yourself to the extent where, you know, you're going to get fed up and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to stop, which I totally understand. I totally get that. And I agree with her. You know, it's not a diet. It is my lifestyle. Um, I think sometimes I definitely do get into that frustrating um, mentality where it's like, I just want to be normal. Like not even to my old normal where I was eating all the, the bull and all the junk food and all the, just all of that stuff. I don't want to get there. I just want to be able to eat whatever. Like have a smaller stomach and eat whatever. Not worry about, oh my gosh, is this slice of bread going to make me gain two pounds? Oh my gosh, is there wheat in that? Oh my gosh, how many carbs are in that? Like having to check every single label and everything. It just, I, I, I've been wishing lately that I just could be normal and... Melly May, I think, did a video on this about how I'm just not normal anymore. My normal is a weight loss surgery patient. That's my identity now, and that's what I need to kind of accept. Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to work on doing. Um, so, yeah. Um, I also saw my physician's assistant. Like I said, she also said I was right on track. She did tell me that from month six to month nine, she's seen people have a really hardcore stall um so she felt like where what i was experiencing right now since i'm kind of right in the middle of it is very normal is what she told me which did kind of reassure me which did kind of put my nerves at ease but it's still frustrating and she did acknowledge that that you know she knows that it's frustrating but with the way that i'm working out with the foods that i'm eating that you know don't worry about it you will lose and my nutritionist was saying she was like oh losing doesn't stop at 12 months it's at a year and a half out you know you have all this time you still have time um, I'm just getting anxious that like my one year is coming up in five months. That seems like a far, far away, but it's not like my one year is in five months. What if I lose 10 pounds in five months? Like I would like to at least be in Wonderland at Wonderland. Like I think my goal is like around 170, but if I'm in the 100 range, if I'm in Wonderland, I think I'm going to be okay. So, um, she said it was perfectly normal. I'm right on track. Calm your freaking tits, Caitlin. Okay. Um, and what else? She said that my iron was a little bit low. She did say that. I told her I'm going to try the, the prescription. And she said that if I'm still feeling really tired, um, that they would have to do a, an iron infusion. She said that she was considering doing that now but my kind of numbers were just on the cusp so she said to try the prescription and then if my um 
tiredness is still bothering me to let them know and then we can do a, a iron infusion through an IV but she said there's like it takes a long time there are five different appointments you have to go to and just be hooked up to an IV with the iron infusion so I'd really prefer not to do that um, but she did say that because my numbers are low then that might be something we'd have to do she said everything else improved everything else went up which is great my vitamin D my calcium I've been taking these calcium cal caltrate cal, cal Citrical D3 um, calcium suppl supplement of D3. I don't even know if these are the right ones because it's like citrate. I'm not sure. But I got these and they're delicious. And then I realized they're seven grams of carbs per serving. Um, but everything else she said looked good. Um, yeah. And then, so then I went and we did the body analysis. And let's see. It says I'm 5'4. Weighed in at 217. My BMI was 37.2. I started a little over 51, so that's not too bad. I did, when I was seeing the nurse who was doing like my blood pressure and everything, she had mentioned, she's like, you wanna hear a, a cool fact? And I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, if you were to walk in today off the streets and ask for surgery, because I didn't have any comorbidities, I didn't have like sleep apnea or diabetes or anything like that to go along with my BMI being so high. That's the only reason I qualified is because of my BMI. She said, if you came in off the streets right now with no comorbidities, um, your BMI right now, we would decline you. We would tell you you're, you can't, you're too low beneath the BMI um, cutoff and you wouldn't qualify for surgery. And I was like, that was, you know, that's so nice of you to say. <laughs> I was like, actually, that's really kind of a neat thing to hear. Like, I wouldn't even qualify for weight loss surgery if I had wanted to do it. Like, I feel really good about myself. I feel like every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, okay, girl, look at you. Look at you. You're so tiny. I know I'm not tiny by any stretch of the imagination, but going from where I was to where I am and never really having lived here as a grown woman is pretty incredible. So I really appreciated that from her. Um, so it's at my BMI is 37.2. My BMR is 1,751 calories, which is like super frustrating because that's the amount of calories I need to take in on a daily basis to maintain my weight of 217. I eat like 800 to 1,000 calories a day. So why am I not losing, you know, like 10 pounds a week? Like why? I don't get it. I don't really understand that because that's exactly what she told me it was too. And, and I've tried to figure that out for myself in the past, but she's like, that's what you would need to, to take. I don't, I don't take that. Why am I not losing weight? Impedance, impedance, I'm not impotent. <laughs> impedance, impedance is 367 with some weird symbol. I don't even know what that is. My fat percentage, this is the amount of overall body fat that I have on my body and it's 41.4%. It says the desirable range is 21 to 33%. So she said she felt really good with where I was coming into, um, into that range I know I'm above obviously but I'm still obese guys um my fat mass how much fat I have on my body right now is 90 pounds so I guess that means I could lose 90 pounds I mean and not have any fat on my body which would never happen that will never happen um my FFM this is interesting my FFM which what she explained it to be to me is the weight of like my bones and my organs and everything like that it's 127 pounds so that means I could never get to 127 pounds. I can never get that low because obviously you need body fat on your body. So I can never get to that point. Like I could never get to Lauren losing level. I'm a little jealous. She's so cute and like tiny. I can never get there. It's just not possible. And I told you guys I had a big skull. I told you I have a big head and that's how I can judge that I wouldn't make a good like stick thin person because I would be like a bobblehead. I wouldn't be able to hold my head up. It's now medically proven. <laughs> um, my TBW, total body water. That doesn't make sense. Um, but this is the amount of water weight that makes up my body and it's 93 pounds, which she said um, you want to have it about 50 to 60% of your body weight. So I'm almost 50%. She said it was good, but I don't think so. So that was that. That was my composition. She also took my measurements. Hold. Oh. Please look at the dirty be uh, bedroom behind me. Oh, I didn't even... Anyways, I took a picture of... Um, they took my measurements for my six months. And they took pictures of it because I don't even know where I did with the form now. But it's on this phone that I'm filming on. So just know that 
oh, my overall loss of inches was I think 49 inches overall. Pretty good. Um, I think I lost four inches in my biceps, which she was like, that's really good. And I was like, they're still like pretty big. But they went, I think from 17 inches to 13 inches. Um, my boobs were obviously a big loss. I was like, oh, this is gonna be negative. And then my waist was down like, I think 13 inches. Like it was something pretty cool. So that was really nice that I got to be able to see those stats as well. Um, I felt really good leaving the appointment. I felt like um, I'm kind of where I should be. I feel like I just need to stay focused. I need to not let it derail. <coughs> I need to not let this derail me. The fact that I'm not losing as much as I would like, and I just need to keep pushing. Um, like I said, I, I see my body, and I'm just. I mean, I see my body clothed, and I am ecstatic with where I'm at as compared to where I have been. Um, it's just a matter of like, I just want to see the scale move. Like I'm thinking like 170, um, 175 as a goal weight. I have no idea. She asked me what my goal weight was. I told her 170. She's like, that's totally doable, Caitlin, but you're probably not going to hit that. Probably. You think you're probably not going to hit that within your 12 month period, your first 12 months. I was like, what do you mean? I can't lose like 50 pounds in the next five months. I can't even lose 10 pounds in two months. So no, no, no. So I think that's about it, you guys. Um, I did want to mention hair loss. I talked about it in my last video. Renee, or Presley Forever VSG, mentioned this in one of her videos recently. It's the OGX Fight Fallout Niacin 3 and Caffeine Shampoo. I bought the shampoo and the conditioner, and I've been using these um, interchangeably with my Nioxin. And um, Niacin, Nioxin. I wonder if there's like a correlation. but. I really do feel like I'm hoping that I'm coming to the tail end of you know the hair falling out issue I'm not sure if that's really the case or if this did help but I really haven't had as much fallout as I have since I started using this and Renee said the same thing that she feels like it did make a difference so OGX I got it at CVS it was seven dollars a bottle so you can get it anywhere though like Target Walgreens Walmart probably um, so that's not been too bad you guys look at my cute cup so tiny but I just loved the colors and I do drink up out of a straw whatever um I think that's all that I was trying to update you guys on it's 17 minutes in what else was I gonna say I have no idea I've tried to film this video so many times um but yeah so everything's going really well um mm, 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 mm. that's it that's it we're gonna cut we're cutting you off Caitlin cut you off so thank you guys so much for watching I really and truly appreciate you guys uh, feel free to leave a comment down below or reach out to me if you have any questions or anything. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you. Um, that's it. I am excited because I am going to go meet Renee Presley Forever VSG this weekend. I hope that's still on. And yes, so I just, I'm like excited for the next cupping, cupping months. The next coming months. So, okay we're done. Goodbye. I'm, I'm shutting myself off. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.